Hey, what's up? I'm Luca Chanel, and you're watching the Shine Season Podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. y'all as you guys know i'm your host luca chanel and i have the pleasure of having my girl the creative influencer maya simone thank you (laughs) chanel (laughs) okay um hi everyone it's a pleasure to be here i'm maya simone i'm a full-time digital marketer part-time vibe creator aka content creator um what well, I'm a little Miss Chatterbox, so I'm gonna stop right there, and <laughs> <laughs> you can take it away. Yo, I love Maya because it's a pleasure to have you on the show, of course. But it's like you're my friend in real life, and we'd always known that we we're gonna do shit like this. Exactly, we manifested this. <laughs> I don't know what class. Cheers. I guess we'll cheers. cheers. Like, 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 like. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> clearly we're not media trained we're so used to like <laughs> being behind the scenes so this is very much new to me it's not new to <laughs> M- Muka, but <laughs> okay go sit down girl <laughs> is this like behind the scenes or is this like <laughs> yo <laughs> I don't know if we go make this, it. <laughs> maybe this why. Maybe this why you can't work with your friends. Exactly. I mean, but this is a good time. Like we all deserve to laugh, and you know, because why would you want to have a boring guest or someone life who doesn't? Is, <laughs> life is too hard. Okay. Yo, we have to like bless the mic. I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike. Prediction? Are we good? <laughs> <laughs> okay okay because i want to break nothing <laughs> okay but yes you're my girl you're this my is girl what, like we can do shit like this like you guys got a preview it's how crazy it can get let's talk about like what recently just happened in our lives okay your birthday Okay, so I just turned 25, Leo season. Um, I feel like I've been waiting for this moment all my life. Um, when SpongeBob and Patrick was laughing <laughs> about what's funnier than 24, <laughs> and they said 25, that shit, I get why they was laughing, because this shit ain't this shit is funny. Um, it's a joke. It's a joke. And I've only been 25 for, what's today? For probably about, like, five to eight days I can't <laughs> add right now um and I mean it I didn't really feel like no physical shift or anything like that but I feel like the cup the weeks leading to my birthday I was just like damn I'm really about to be like a quarter of a century mm-hmm. um I did feel like when my birthday hit like a switch come on of like responsibility like oh like this is the time we're supposed to be getting married having kids i mean i don't think it's really in the cars at the moment we all plan for like 25 married mm-hmm. with kids yeah. well i don't know if we all but i did <laughs> <laughs> girl but you're doing it yes um and i think that is one of the issues or something that I'm trying to like um, hone in because we're in our 20s and I, it didn't hit me till now like damn like I'm in my 20s and um, I don't know maybe just not to take life too seriously because I feel like when you turn 25 that's when everything does get serious but then again you won't be able to live and enjoy because by the time you do it's gonna be you gonna be like fucking 30 and <laughs> <laughs> I'm like damn like when I was 25 like I was I wish I did this did that but so for me personally, I just kind of want to relish in the moment. Yeah, in the back of my head, like all those milestones are there. But mm-hmm. if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'm not too stressed about it. Or at least I'm trying not to be because mm-hmm. I feel like in today's society, the goalposts kind of shifted, like with everything that's going on right now in the world. So, so much. Yeah. And you're turning 25 soon, next month. So how does that feel? Um, Because <laughs> I have to really think about it because I'm turning 25. I feel like it's definitely, like, for me, at least a wake-up call. 
Okay. Just for like, all right, you're midway. Because it just, I feel like it happened so fast. So fast. So yeah. I guess for me, it's just trying to figure out what that looks like, you know, like, but one day at a time. Yeah, I guess we got to create our own definition because when I was younger, I've been journaling this moment since I could write, I think. Yeah. And planning all my kids' names and all that stuff. I didn't know what I wanted to be. I mean, I had an idea. I wanted to do stuff like this. I know mm. that for sure. But um, I didn't really have a vision. And I'm a vision girl. Like, I make mood boards and vision boards all the time. So it's crazy. Like, I can't really pinpoint what I thought my life would look like now. But mm. I guess I'm happy with what my life looks like now. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Yeah, I'm just going to take it day by day because... That's the motto. Mm-hmm. Like, one day at a time. I was about to say Hakuna Matata, but I don't think that's what... <laughs> I don't think that's what their motto... What does that mean? Oh, no worries. Mm-hmm. I right? don't remember. Okay, it's for the best. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Next. <laughs> Yo, I just think back, like, to childhood. <laughs> like this is what the type time. of like shit that we did or at least like talked about yeah like, we're gonna be these journalism girls remember we had that class you guys we went to high school together and we took this like you know how you can get credits for college we took a course that got us media credits you know what i'm thinking right well, now smc yeah but i'm like did those credits even trust my car over Maybe I have amnesia. I don't know, but I don't remember them transferring over. Mine's counted as media one. Wow. Okay, the thing is, yeah, so we both had these dreams of being in the media. Still do. We're still, like, it's in fruition right now. But, um, so I went to San Francisco State, and so the program that they had was called Becca. I believe it was, like, broadcasting entertainment communication and something like that and Mm. so i was just like okay yeah i'm gonna continue this dream like following high school i sat in one class i didn't like the way the professor talked and (laughs) why did i switch my major the next day yo i and she was i mean she was a white professor and i just felt like what she was talking about it just wasn't resonating with me at the moment granted i should have waited because i'm not i think college i learned a lot of lessons Mm -hmm. um so i ended up um switching over to business marketing and Mm -hmm. i'm happy with that but um Mm -hmm. I feel like at this point, like anybody could do like what we're doing, like right now. It's yeah. been here, shine season. <laughs> um, this is like my first. Believe it or not, this is like my first time being like filmed on camera because I'm so used to being behind the scenes, mm-hmm. or I'm so used to being in control of like the placement and stuff like that. So I'm very much uncomfortable, but I'm comfortable with you. But <laughs> because I'm so vain and whatever i'm uh-huh. like what, what am i looking like right now but it's okay <laughs> this is like a, a testament of confidence for sure you're that girl yeah you're that so, girl don't you ever forget thank it. you um okay so what what were the notes so according to the notes i did just want to talk about that transition in 2020 because when the pandemic hit i remember us having a phone conversation and just talking about life and just like how it was going and to know, like, you personally, like, you've gotten yourself out of that. Like, we both have. Like, to make it through that time period where everything was just so crazy is like, whew, thank goodness. But one thing that I admired about you is that you really got creative, girl. Those tote bags. Yeah. I loved them. Maya had, like, this line of, like, Zodiac tote bags. They were so cute. The Libra one was thank pink. You. I loved it. Thank you. Because, like, the girls <laughs> that get it, get it. Period. Um, it's funny because I was cleaning out my closet yesterday and like trying to organize all my purses and one. And I'm a tote bag girl, so that's why I did that. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the time, and still to this day, astrology was very much like prevalent in every conversation that we're having. And like every time I log on Twitter, like I would see something Libra that is Leo that and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm into astrology and I'm not the type to like um, try to capitalize off of every moment. But at mm-hmm. the time, it just felt very right. It felt mm-hmm. very necessary. Also, we was in the fucking house. Like, <laughs> like I need to do something. Saying, you got creative. Yeah. Like, you really, but you've always been like a hands on person, like always yeah, making shit. Yeah, I'm a DIY But like, girl. you really had like a little store, not little, but you had a store. No, yeah. A web front, a storefront, a web storefront. I sure did. Yeah. And I love that bag. I still have it. Oh, it's still standing the test of time. Now it's more so like a, um, 
I got a grocery bag. Oh, because you know, tote bags get a little. Yeah, especially crunchy. that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was my beginning phase. <laughs> <laughs> but if I if I were to do it now, I would definitely invest in like more high quality material. But, <laughs> but you still did the thing. No, yes, you that was that it. was a moment. I almost forgot about that. So why would you ever forget about that? Well, I mean, aside from seeing the tote bag that I had in my closet, uh, like I said, I was going through a breakup at that time actually. So I was just trying to like be busy mm-hmm. while also in the pandemic, and then Girl. I was trying to learn new skills. And uh, my dad, he's also very creative, so I think that's where I got that from. Um, mm-hmm. So I taught myself how to use like the Cricut machine and like graphic design and all that. I was just like, F it. Oh, I think I was probably, oh, I was trying to pay off my credit card. So <laughs> I was just like, let me like whip up some shit. Yo, and, I love um, it. Depop was popping at that time. So I was shout out to Depop. Yeah, shout out to Depop. So I've sold like, shades on Depop before. Oh, wow. Shout out to you. Yeah, girl. The Depop is for the girlies. Yeah. 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 But. No, but that's one thing I do admire about you. Like, you're definitely a true artist. Like, I feel like one of the things that makes you a creative person is just, like, creating your way out. Like, that's my saying. I have it tattered on my body for a reason. Because it's really a mantra. And it's really, like, a lifestyle. Like, like you said, going through a breakup, life transitions. That's when you start feeling who you are. Yeah. And then you start producing. Yeah, that's all I So, I love that. Yeah, because if I wasn't doing that, I'd probably just be laying in bed, crying, hiding. Yeah. So I had to do something. So that was like one of the many things that I like tried to learn or like produce. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I agree with you. So thank you. I'm very, very hands on, very trying to keep myself busy or learning new skills. So yeah. But you definitely know how to like build community for sure. Whether you know it or not. I feel like being your friend for a minute, like I've definitely seen you like go through like, I don't know. And like, I know. And yeah. it's like, but you still have that essence to you. I feel like it comes naturally in your own Maya type of way, Thank which you, I love. <laughs> Thank you. I love that. Like you've always been yourself, you know, and just an artsy fartsy girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a funny girl. I go on and on. I'm like a cheerleader. Thank you. This is going, going down memory lane right girl, now. Girl, yeah. for real. <laughs> but let's talk about BT Weekend. Okay. Because I feel like BET as a network, like just who it is to the culture, BET matters. It, it has a voice. Yeah. You know? BET does matter. And I remember like my first episode like of Shine Season, mm-hmm. I was talking about me trying to audition to like be a host or something. Oh. On BET. It was like BET weekend, like a work oh, wow. weekend, but the line was so long, Maya. You had oh so there was it was just a lot it was a lot going on oh, wow. and that was definitely an experience, huh. but that's what motivated me to like fuck it I'm gonna start my own shit yeah, <laughs> yeah. Chinese season because it's not even black owned anyway, but it's okay um, it's not okay actually but um, <laughs> yeah so BET weekend yeah what was that so that happened for me but I brought all that up to say that that's something that definitely holds weight. In just our world of just like creativity and like trying to pursue it or doing it as a profession at times like these things come up mm-hmm. and i even talked about like the um the red carpet looks on the show i saw that <laughs> i was there in the flesh <laughs> so that's all i said we have to get into it okay maya my girl <laughs> you did the damn thing thank you how did it feel to be there like for the, you guys who don't know maya she was a journalist on the red carpet, reporting, yeah, interacting. Okay, so uh, it was actually very last minute. Um, <laughs> not like no whatever shade to my job. So I believe what actually happened was uh, my coworker was actually supposed to be in attendance, but they thought she lived in LA, when, but she actually lives in New York. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't think she um, could fly down in time. So mm-hmm. my um, director reached out to me and I was like the next best thing or like the first person to come to her mind Mm -hmm. and so I was flattered and I just hurried up and said yeah because it's like BET Awards but then after I did it I was like BET Awards and so (laughs) I I had like some experience like um interviewing people like within South Central but that was like when I was like 12 or like 13 and interviewing people in front of Food for Less and stuff like that uh (laughs) but this 
um, with celebrities. It was BET. Um, yeah. Mind you, I don't really get starstruck like that. So I didn't really have an issue like talking to anyone mm-hmm. or anybody. The thing is, I prefer to have contacts over with who I'm talking to because mm-hmm. I don't want to like just be talking about anything. So that's what I was worried about. Um, on top of it being last minute, trying to find an outfit. I just realized like, up until that weekend, I didn't know what people wore on the red carpet. I mean, outside of the Met Gala, like mm. people wearing gowns and stuff like that. I was like, what the hell did the reporters be wearing like on the BET red carpet? And so that was stressing me out the most. Um, and then I had just flew back from home the mm-hmm. day before I found L. And not to get dark, but my dog had passed away. Aww. So uh, I was going through that. Then I had to fly back. Um, so I had to find an outfit. Zara, I can't fit. <laughs> I was like, oh Zara God. been tripping lately. Yeah, I used to. That was the worst job I ever had. In I my feel life, like Zara yeah. has become one of those stores where it's like, now everyone knows about it, mm-hmm. and they don't always carry all of the sizes in the same quantity. Yeah, there was definitely no extra larges. On so the it's floor. like we're all shopping at Zara, and then on top of that, like inventory is, yeah, it fluctuates. Yeah, also to the line. <laughs> Can we talk about, and then the, the damn fitting rooms you walk in and you come out drenched oh my gosh. because the last time I was in the Zara fitting room this lady was like where's my phone oh, <laughs> she said, where's my phone? oh my god, oh my god. Yeah. it's a mess in there but so I didn't find no outfit in there um so what did I do the day before I went to go I was like okay I'm gonna hit up Norsem Rag and then I tried Zara again um Target um and then I have a friend who works at like a vintage consignment shop in Burger bank so she was like come through blah 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 so i went there and i actually found this like my first designer piece i didn't even know who he was helmet Lang or something like okay. that but i didn't end up wearing it because i called my mom she said girl you joking right and i was just <laughs> like and i ended up buying it It was damn 100 dollars I didn't even Why are you whispering? Because <laughs> I was broke. <laughs> I was broke. And um, that was the part of the stress, too, because I was like, I got no money to be spending on no damn BT. We all, oh, also, your friend Shania hooked me up with yes, a ponytail. The pony was so, okay, pony. Yes. So it I, was pony. Thank you. I um, love that. So I basically, the, the creative I am, I was like, okay, since I can't find no outfit, I can't fit shit, I'm going to just accessorize and I'll overcompensate say with Period. that and just make up something so i ended up i had a shirt in my closet that was actually thrifted Period. so i wore that and then i wore this like orange skirt from um nordstrom and then i wore these i bought some fresh forces because i have flat feet and i'm not about to wear no damn heels or nothing on the carpet yeah. so i was just like you know i'm just gonna come my way um and when i got there everybody was looking like she in fashion over i mean let me stop okay but uh, <laughs> Why is, i didn't even have to do all this no yeah i got there i was i knew that was gonna I happen more, she was I, I did, yeah i mean we'll see what she got we don't know we don't know what she was sure is gonna give Spring, yet. Summer. Uh, <laughs> um so yeah i was doing that for nothing anyways i get there I was totally under the impression that uh, my dir- I was just going to be a shadow to my director. So it was yeah. just two of us. And so Girl, throw it on you. It's like you she get was like, uh, she was passing me all like the, the mic and all this stuff. So I was this for? like, okay, I'm going to hold it. <laughs> She's like, Girl, no, you about to be asking all these questions. I was just like, and so I shouldn't, obviously, I thought like I was excited because I thought I was going to be asking questions, but I didn't really think I was going to be asking questions. Mm. And so I was just like, Damn. But obviously, I'm not going to say no. And plus, mm-hmm. too, um, I was going through a transition period of, like, being um, promoted to full time. So I kind of wanted to, like, you know, keep yeah. keep all my P's and Q's or whatever. So And I wanted to do it. I was just nervous because I've never done anything like this. Um, but it was it was an experience. Um, I basically saw, like, anyone that you can name. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't talk to anyone you can name. <laughs> but that's because I realized that celebrities that are at, like, a higher status, mm-hmm. they just get there, take two pictures, and keep on walking. Mm-hmm. I saw Hallie and Chloe and Hallie. They, didn't, they came in together, but Hallie was with her boyfriend. And I saw them from a distance. And <laughs> Hallie's boyfriend was trying to talk to all the reporters. And she was like, let's go. Like, she just kept, she was like, come on. Like. <laughs> So not yeah, she was like not to, so she we kept late. on walk. Yeah, so um, yeah, I saw everyone. Um, That's I got, a real thing though, like trying to get people to even want to like engage with media. Yeah, you know, like that thing, trying to pull them in, like any little spark you can try to find in that moment. Like if you really want that story, it's like 
I like yeah. your shoes. I think no, that's that was literally all I was saying. The hair looks I, good. I, was like, I like your outfit. I did not. I was like, I like I love your outfit. I was just like, this is awful. Like, but then again, don't tell it all no, moves. yeah. So I was just like, okay, but that was just like my warm up. Yeah. Um, and that was my way to get in because not all the higher celebrity or higher celebrities wanted to talk. Yeah. Two, I think the most reason why I was uncomfortable was because it very much feels like a salesman and I hate sales. Like I hate bothering people. If they don't want to talk fine with me, but like (laughs) I was there for a job. So, um, I had to do it. And so, um, I, I interviewed a lot of Nigerian and international artists. So that was very cool because Afrobeats is though. It's always been, um, impactful and power, uh, impactful and prominent. I think right now, especially on social media, everyone is kind of like exploring that um, genre. Mm-hmm. So I and interviewed a lot of um, Nigerian artists, learned more about them. I asked them, like, if I were to go to Nigeria, um, what place would you recommend for me to go eat? So cool stuff like that. Um, I interviewed uh, Matthew Sherry. Um, who else? Brandy from P Valley. Jesse. Okay. She was with Jesse Smollett. Um, so ask them a few questions. You could all you basically you get what you get. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um we were standing in between um I think it was like ABC on my right and mm-hmm. then like Hip Hop DX or something on my okay. left. Um so they were getting like the heavy hitters and stuff like mm-hmm. that, but Everyone was pretty much nice. Like, I asked Uzi if I could get, like, a video of his outfit. Um, Jacquees, I didn't know what that man looked like. I don't, <laughs> maybe because maybe because his hair is normally, like, longer, but uh-huh. he has it, like, twisted up. Uh-huh. So he was standing right next to me, and I was just like, oh, cute outfit. But I didn't know who he fucking was. <laughs> and my, my it happens because people yeah. start experimenting, and it's like, we don't see these people on a regular. So, like, yeah. I don't actually know what you're doing, like, with your, you know? Yeah, so I had no idea. But I was just like, let me get his outfit not knowing. And then my manager was like, that's your queen. So I was like, oh. Um, and who else? Chance the Rapper, Ari Lennox. So I basically. Ari looks good in person, huh? Wow. Her I, look in person, I'm sure yes. it was. Yes, she took my breath away as expected. Um, but it was definitely experience. Um, she's dropping a, a yeah, I was just about tonight. to say, I think it's like called Hoodie. hoodie? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm excited. The cover art is like, yeah, it's a, my- it's a mystery bitch. to me. So, yeah, um, I, yeah, I pretty much asked questions, got a lot of social content. Um, everyone was nice, everyone, um, answered all my questions, mm. laughed, joked around. Um, a few stars actually were pretty stuck up, but it wasn't the ones that I thought would be. Like the people who need to be talking to the reporters and getting their stuff out. Yeah. They were, at, they were not media trained, but they just, you could tell like they didn't want to be there. Yeah. So it's like, dang. It was um, like an obligation. So, it's like, I gotta yeah. talk to. And it, like you feel that when you're yeah. in these spaces and actually working. Like not even to be a fan, not to talk yeah. about oh, anything yeah. in particular, but just that. working. Like they don't think about like we're not coming at you like that. Like because this is necessary. Like it's part of your job. Like to at least report things. Like I think people try to minimize that because social media. Yeah. Like before we had social media, like that was a form of communication. Right. Yeah. And so and without and you as a public images. figure, what's wrong with just addressing yeah. it sometimes? But I also understand the balance of like I don't want to right now. No, yeah, I agree. But I also understand, one, if anything you should want, or specifically for, like, black artists and talent, like, yeah. I personally would want to talk to the black interviewers for and sure. reporters. For um, sure. Also, too, I felt like, like, celebrities in general, I didn't realize until that moment, like, this is a time to really, like, show your personality and answer questions that mm-hmm. the public, because some people aren't really active on social media, so I feel like this is where, like, those popular, like, uh, memes and like videos get found on Twitter because it happened like at a place at like the Met Gala or red carpet yeah. and stuff like that. So, um, definitely interesting. It was hot as hell. Yeah. Um, but they did it where like, I guess the sun has to be facing like the wall, obviously, cause that's where the best lighting was. Yeah. Um, people do be screaming like, Oh, like Ari, Ari, like over here, stuff yeah. like that. Um, but the publicists come to the reporters first, actually, which I thought was helpful. And some people even gave me like cheat sheets about the artist. Okay. So that that's I can helpful. Know. Yeah. And that's, that's what I was helpful. stressing out about the most. Uh, yeah. Like at least a little fact sheet. Yeah. But the older people, I had no idea what the hell to ask them. Irv Gotti walked up. I was like, Oh, and I hand over the, <laughs> I handed over the mic to my yeah. director. Cause I was just like, I don't know what to say or I just, some people actually genuinely did like freeze up, but not because of Star Trek. I just didn't want to like, 
not know what to ask them mm-hmm. um, but i did have like general questions but mm-hmm. i could tell from their demeanor like they didn't really want to be here or maybe it was just hot i don't know but overall it was a great experience i would definitely do it again um it was a great like first time yes um, you did amazing thank you so yeah yes the look gave thank the you the girls were outside the pony was pony mm-hmm. <laughs> i took it out maybe like five days after it'd it be like that the, yeah the ponytails are short term yeah. like the last time y'all see me i had a ponytail <laughs> i'll see you was back yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just because you know but i love a ponytail no matter what because it's a look it's a statement for when it you know because yeah. even ponytails you're not supposed to keep them for too long because you know that tension yeah no that's, that's what, what people happening forget. To me. yeah you know it's definitely weighing me down so yeah it happens but girl let's get into these tiktok streets okay because you in them i am <laughs> <laughs> it's outside yeah. with the tiktok <laughs> i love yeah. tiktok i liked I my guilty pleasure with tiktok is the is the dance t- challenges yeah i mean i still haven't tried to do a dance challenge i mean i do them when i'm sitting down at least do savage I'm okay savage. i know i know savage uh, i know the full savage, savage thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know that one but i won't do it in yeah. public or record it but um so you know yeah. the dances you just don't that's not your content yeah it's not saying like i wouldn't post it because mm. i don't mind i generally just don't be like let me get my ass up yeah. learn this challenge yeah. I, I just i enjoy watching them but yeah. like maybe one day like i feel compelled to post it yeah <laughs> <laughs> but your tiktok content has a maya style to it mm-hmm. where it's like unique to you like because unique. you are an influencer yeah like these are the facts how does it feel to be in this space right now of like this emerging app and it's like a considered channel you know like yeah. how does it feel to be a part of that in a way where it's like it's a smart investment for you. Um, so I I love TikTok as well. Um, I downloaded it peak pandemic. I was just a lurker as yeah. we all were. Um, and then I realized how unhealthy it was because I was on it for hours, mm-hmm. not like going to sleep till 4 a.m. So I um, deactivated it and all that stuff. Then maybe a year, maybe like a couple months later, I re-downloaded it, became a lurker again. And then I found myself becoming an advocate for it because I don't know if you ever noticed, but people in our age range or generation, some of them are haters. They're like, Ugh, like I don't want to download TikTok. Like, what does TikTok do to you? Like, why people are people be scared so- to support nowadays? Mm, yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> but scared to support, and then it's like they don't want to support until it's like exactly. So it makes sense to support. Yeah, like but- look at all them followers. So- follow that <laughs> okay yeah very much anti i don't like that but um i started so i had like maybe three videos that i was like playing around with because i'm not gonna lie when you first open an app you're like what the hell is all this it's like, overwhelming yeah so and i it's didn't so blank it's just like a blank canvas yeah almost. so i didn't even bother like messing around um so and then too it was very much dance challenges all the time so i was just like scrolling and scrolling um but it was like late january mm-hmm. where i was just like hmm i found this audio mm-hmm. and it was talking about like um different styles like minimalism maximalism and all that mm-hmm. stuff and i consider myself a maximalist when it comes to like my style um so i was just like hmm my apartment is like three-fourths of the way decorated so let me just like uh, film it so i filmed it and the funny thing is, I posted it, and it didn't really, like, gain traction until two weeks later. So, it kind of goes shows the power of, like, the algorithm or, like, I'm a marketer, so, like, SEO. Maybe someone was, like, looking it up, but mm-hmm. um, it didn't really pop off. Your keywords may have been on point. Yeah. So, yes, Mac- Maximalist Studio Apartment. I think I put, like, 500 square feet. Oh, like, okay. all, all the keywords. Um, so, and then it was popping off. And was, my friend, she was the one who was updating me because I wasn't... I'm a post and go type of girl. I just mm-hmm. post it and leave. Like, post yeah. it, throw my phone, go. Um, and, well, I was very much like that with Instagram because that's a scary place. Yeah. But TikTok, I was just like, let me just post it and go. Um, and then it blew up. And then I didn't really think nothing, nothing much of it. It was nice. It was mm-hmm. cool, like a cool experience. But then I posted again. I was like, okay, let me show my kitchen now. And then I posted that. And that low key kind of popped off too. So then people kept asking questions, recommendations. I was like, shit, now I gotta maintain this. Yeah. Um, and so, but I didn't like, I wouldn't say like some people, like they post something like extremely viral and then they get all these followers and then that's it. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I think people have like this misconception of TikTok. Like, 
oh, everyone gets viral or everyone yeah. has all these followers, which could be true. But like for me, I really I would say like I had to work for it. And I'm yeah. happy that I, I went that route or that route happened for me because yeah. um, I find like what you said earlier, I'm very much a community builder and I like love engagement yeah. and I love creating content. Yes. So I was just like, I'm doing this for myself. It so happens like I get like attention and stuff like that. Then cool. Then. Yeah, so that I've actually built a community, I would say, like, I have probably, like, a solid, like, 10 girls that I interact with almost daily. And, mm -hmm. like, if they were, like, to text me, like, let's go here. And I'm like, okay, yeah. Like, as if, like, we know each other. Like, really building, like, a sisterhood on there. Um, as far as influence, um, I'd say all my life, like, I wanted to do stuff like this. I wanted to be, like, a YouTuber. I was very much on Snapchat before I, like, mm -hmm. de um, deactivated it. Um and I'm into everything. Um, and so I don't know how to like humbly say it, but like I always knew like I had influence. Been that girl. Period. So I just, um, I knew like once I picked it up or like shown like my apartment or whatever mm -hmm. that is going to get like some traction or I'm going to help influence. But my personal favorite word or my all time favorite word is inspiration. So inf influence and inspiration kind of go hand in hand. And that's how I kind of like de humble it or whatever yeah. um i'm like inspiring people to either like be themselves or like try new things or experiment and stuff like that um so it's a great feeling actually yes. so yeah i don't know if i even answered your question but we're just talking yeah girl. Okay. okay it's like a, it's it's all of that okay but i think for me like watching your content you definitely have like a good balance between authentic and like aesthetic but i guess the question is like when it comes to content creation what do you think triumphs the other do you think authenticity over aesthetic or is the aesthetic over because you know like sometimes people don't know like yeah. where to start like should i just go and be myself or should i like kind of have like a structure i think like should. or what do you think i think you should very much be yourself yes um, so authenticity authenticity you? but for me personally I happen to be authentically aesthetic. Like everything that yes. I do just happens to be yes. aesthetic and I'm just being myself. So Yay. there are like thousands of people similar to me, but there are people who go in like, let me start a TikTok and like post this certain way. Now you have to keep up with that for the rest of your life because yeah. that's what you start as. And yeah, I mean, not saying like you're like, um, that's permanent or you have to stick to that, but I think you should always like start off being yourself. But if it's like a business, then sure, maybe you, aesthetics are more of like a priority, but like yeah. if you could somehow like integrate your personality or like some sort of authenticity or something like that, then yeah. But I, to answer your question, I would say I always like value authenticity. Cause that's what leads that's what people that's how you influence people so for sure mm -hmm. for sure just by being yourself like exactly. that don't ever lose sight of that yeah it sounds cliche like we hear it every day but it's true like yeah. people think it's easy to just go viral and stuff like that or create pick up a phone like, oh i want to create content like okay the, yeah do it but that doesn't mean you're gonna get like all these followers i mean you don't know but um yeah, just be yourself. Uh, yeah. Don't force it. Because me, I'm very much like, I'm just posting just to post. If I happen to make money, sure. But I'm not going to let that take over my life. Like, I'm not going to let that become... For me, personally, I was going to say, um, a passion being turned into a profit is cool and all. But if it's starting to become, feel like a, ch a job or a chore, then I feel like it's just not for you. Or that's not what you should have done. So... But I don't want to, that's another whole thing. But yeah. <laughs> no, it's a real thing. Because I always think about in that space, like, that you're speaking of, like, okay, if all these things went away, like, who am I at my core? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that ties back to the authenticity part of just existing. You know, like, I think that we're naturally being who we are and just that like, we end up in these spaces. And it's like, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But like, I think no matter what, it's in the work that you're doing. Right. Of just like showing up as yourself. Exactly. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that was good conversation. It was. Thank you. <laughs> I'm very much a, um, this is random. I don't know how to appreciate like silence or breaks. I feel like we just got to keep going. <laughs> like, I'm just like, okay, next, next, because otherwise I'll just be standing there like, like, oh, everybody looking at me. Look at Cindy, like, yeah, oh, I'm like, no. okay, next. Like, let's go. Well, I guess that's a good transition for the segments. Oh. <laughs> Cause you're on shine season. Okay. You're here to stay. Okay, thank you. 
Sí, no, a mí se thank you, thank you. Over it. It's okay. Yo, so we got to get into the fresh off the press segment. Okay. And this is the time in the show where we just kind of just get into what's going on in the world. Um, and unfortunately, like, it's a little bit of heavy news going on just in LA right now with the La Brea crash. Mm-hmm. It's definitely a thing. Um, and I think since it's like a case that's developing, I just feel like it overall just poses conversation for like safety and mental health. Yeah. Um, well, it's devastating. And to be honest, uh, I'm an empath. So everything that happens for me specifically, summers are always the worst because that's when like the most violence and tragedy happens. And so for me, since I'm an empath, I kind of absorb everything that's happening. It like debilitates me and kind of makes me depressed. And mm-hmm. so I've been thinking about this crash every damn day since it happened because naturally it's just such a sad thing. It's extremely devastating. Like yeah. it happened within our hometown. Um, and then the case is still developing. Like the woman is obviously still alive right. um, and I think it recently came out like she actually wasn't um, intoxicated so it's, that's crazy so it's just like like what really possessed you to be going that fast down that damn hill and yeah. all that stuff and just um, feeling for the families who lost their loved ones so heartbreaking um, yeah so so heartbreaking but it's just like life is just that fast sometimes yeah it's so really fast and we're definitely gonna you know just pray over the whole situation but back to the whole concept of life going fast. You know, the earth is spinning faster. Yeah, my job so actually. our days are shorter. Yeah, my job actually reported on that. I barely read the article, but it was like by one point something milliseconds or something like that. And to but me, you know, that affects like climate. Yeah, I can feel it. It's hot. <laughs> so I, I, can feel it. I probably look it. But yeah. Yo, uh, it's hot in her. I saw a tweet. Regarding that, saying, like, we are so, like, um, desensitized it's to catastrophe. Like, yeah. this is kind of, this is not kind of, this is a fucking big deal. The earth has an axis. Yeah, and this is where we live. So, yeah. I mean, I can't say, like, I noticed it. I mean, time is going by pretty damn fast. But, um, <laughs> Girl, it's like we said, I'm going to be 25. Yeah. So, Whew. I don't know. Is it just going to keep going faster and faster? Are we going to be able to do it all Keep this? evolving because yeah. it's evolution. Oh, I like that. Like that. Like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yo, you are funny. I'm really okay. <laughs> I'm awkward. You know what no, makes me really are awkward black girls like We're together. Dead ass awkward black. Yeah, it's okay. Oh my gosh, are you into rap shit? I only watched two episodes. I planned on tonight to finish. What the about three of them probably came out. Seduce and scheme. Okay, I'm gonna ask a question. What the hell does I'm gonna spend his cream? Because I know it's money, but I never heard of that term in for money. Cream. Where does that come from? I don't know. I kind (laughs) of. We got an audience suggestion. (laughs) Uh Cream stands for cash rules, everything. (gasps) Yes. But. Okay, keep going. But we was, I was just going to break that down, like, you know. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, the show is cute. It's cute. Um, 30 minutes again, which I don't mind because I have a short attention span, actually. Um, the first episode, it wasn't slow, but it was just very much even pilot, but that's, it's a pilot. Mm-hmm. Um, the second is when the energy started picking up, and that's because that's when they were like writing the so song. So you watched it premiere night? Yeah, because it released with two episodes. Yes, so I watched both episodes. So you're barely tapped in. Bare- yeah, it's probably what you need five, to get into five it. episodes you need to get into now. It. If okay. you're into it, leave a comment down below. Engage. Like I want to hear your thoughts on rap shit because I love it. Y'all know, like I'm an Easter Ray stan. Like that's my girl. I think that's like I low key feel like-, like I like rap shit more than Insecure. I was just about to say that. And why is that? Because it's more relatable. Mm. I, like even just in like the way that they're moving. Like not saying that that's my life, but. Even insecure, like the age bracket was a little more mature, yeah. like older, and they lived a certain lifestyle where it's like, you know, corporate America, kind of like rigid in a way. Mm-hmm. They did their shit on the weekends, you know, as we all do, but like they weren't actively like in the career. Like Issa, she did do her shit, but it was more so like nonprofit space or like community engagement type of ways. Yeah. And like for Rapture to really be about music, 
It's exciting, yeah. It's fun. <laughs> it's, it's fun. It's, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. So the photographs are getting ready, too. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so is it actually, I don't know if I made this up, is it loosely based off of the City Girls? Loosely. They're producers okay. on it. Okay, I saw that. Yeah, and another thing for me that just keeps me engaged is the fact that Kid Fury is a writer on okay. that show. Did like, I love him. I think like, he was in the second episode. <sighs> That was cracking me the fuck Be a up. Train. Yeah, I was like, who the fuck? Okay. <laughs> I was but sending him so much love. Yes. So much love. So much love. All the love. time. I think I saw it. I think he posted an update on Instagram, but I think yeah. still take all the time. Like, all the time you need, baby. Yeah. Like, honestly, I think of people like him, and that's definitely who inspired me to, like, do podcasting. Like, oh, yeah. in high school, on the bus, listening to the read. Damn, I was one of them kids. High school. I was one of them kids that they used to talk about. Like, if you under this age, you shouldn't be listening to this. But whatever, since you're oh. a grown folks business, and I was a grown folks <laughs> business, <laughs> I started listening my freshman year of college. Okay, yeah, that's when I first because I was very much the person like I don't like podcasts. They boring. I listened like, in 2013. Oh, yeah. But if you think about my high school yeah. career, I was a little more. Seduce, ask me. Yeah, I, I, I can t- attest to that. Um, so that makes sense. Not in a bad way, of course. But no, but in a real way. Yeah, in a yeah, in, in a, a real, real way. way. Yeah, girl, let's get into self care because that's what we need right now. That's the segment of the show. Okay. So you know, I got these cards. Oh, cute. Where'd you get them from? Simone got me these. Aw, thank you, Simone. We love you, Simone. You guys are both Leos. She is. Oh, really she's like a late July. July Leo. She's like on the cusp. Oh, okay. I don't know how to shuffle. Do you know how to shuffle? I don't want to bend the cards. So I'm Just do it. Okay. Don't look at my nails. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, don't look too close. Do you need it with oh. a mic? Do they all say inspiration? No. Not all of them. I told y'all this is my favorite word. Period. Wow. It was meant to be. Okay. So I just going to... I'm so happy you're here because I don't know how to do that. You look like I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> this is all I got. Well, okay. I can't know they be like this. I mean, it's more smooth when they do it, but they be like this. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> then we're just going to do this. I'm calling it a day. I'm loving this. I need a tutorial. You need to make a TikTok. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll write that down. Today write that is, down. Today is content day. Yeah. Content planning day. Yeah. Okay. Should I? So I hand it back to you, right? You pick them. Okay. And then I just read. Read them. Yeah. How many? This one? Whatever you want. Okay. Actually, you know what I'd be doing? Well, those are with angel cards. It's actually a little too. <laughs> That's too loud. <laughs> okay. Actually, I saw this card. So I'm going to. And when it feels right. Okay, the mic, man. Oh, okay. Grab a mic, grab a mic. <laughs> okay. People who love themselves don't hurt other people. The more we hate ourselves, the more we want others to suffer. Oh. <laughs> a little dark. <laughs> <laughs> um, it says, reflect on a time that you hurt some. <laughs> Yesterday, <laughs> I reflect on a time that you hurt someone else. What inside of you was out of balance during this time? Have you been able to rebalance those parts? It's getting deep. Do you want me to like be? Because what po- you want me to be honest and authentic, but it's gonna be dumb. It's not dumb. It's be just not as deep. You did all that rah rah. Okay, look. It says, reflect on a time that you hurt someone else. So yesterday, I think I hurt my boyfriend's feelings. And what inside of you was out of balance during this time? My birth control. It's making me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and not the BC. Yeah, girl. And it says, have you been able to rebalance those parts? I today was going to stop, but I just took it. But um, yeah, you did. You popped that. I popped it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I just have been really unbalanced and I've just been very angry, very sad. I don't want to say depressed. I don't like saying that because I know it's like a um, real um, thing that people go through. You got to be diagnosed and everything. But mm-hmm. I have been feeling depressed and I've just been be- been feeling mad at the world. Granted, we did just go through this major like life transition and yeah. catastrophic event. Um, what else happened? Uh, just turned 25. I'm working nine to fives. I work from home, but I'm very much cooped in the house. Yeah. Uh, it's just a lot of shit going on on top of taking these drugs and hormones and stuff like that. So I just feel unbalanced. And so I took it today. I mean, I'm dead. I tell all my business, but I'm like, <laughs> I would have finished the pack, but I think after I finish it, 
it's a wrap for me. So, so do you I, know like if any natural protectants? Well, we could go Dr. Sebi, but, <laughs> but I wouldn't necessarily. I think the girlies are saying like if you combine, I think it's like ashwagandha with like. That's good for anxiety. I took one of those before I, I got in traffic. Yeah. Oh, the goalie gummies. Those mm, are so good. If you're listening, good. sponsor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So basically, I've just been feeling very unbalanced, very mean, very angry. Granted, I'm happy to be here, like mm-hmm. with you, kicking in with my homegirls and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, it's a safe place. Yes. And um, yeah, so I've just been very mean to the people who are close to me and I was trying to blame it on them and stuff like that. But by like being mean, like un like when it's not warranted that's hurting other people and i'm a very self-aware person but in the Mm -hmm. moment i'm not aware like what's going on yeah but afterwards i'm like damn why did i do that the only thing i can think of is this damn (laughs) we gotta look into it we gotta look into it it's a real thing because even myself when i'm like on and off of it i definitely can feel the difference in my body as a woman like i definitely can feel and then it's like i deal with all other things Mm -hmm. in the female body that we can get into maybe i should bring a doctor on here or someone who like will talk about natural health natural i don't know but yeah yeah because all these like toxic like little capsule pills we're just yeah, popping it's everything like, we do is essentially everything. toxic it was like we can't escape and it's sad it's so sad um um what was i gonna say so yeah yeah at this point and the reason why i mean damn tell them <laughs> <laughs> the reason why i'm taking them blah 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 like obviously i know but, but, but that is a real it's, it's relatable no women yeah. go through this every day it's, it's just, a real thing but the main reason is because i'm a hypochondriac and i think you always any, no sin. Any. Always any inconvenience. Maya, but can I'm you like, admit that that you're always self diagnosing? You'll be like, I, I got a Google. I, I self self-diagnose I self. I guess. <laughs> okay, I don't die. Mm, I don't know. I've been doing. I think it's very much. How do I say? I noticed this about myself in uh, middle school, actually, and it's because of Degrassi, which is random. But I love Degrassi. The dad, Emma's dad, when he got cancer, mm-hmm. he found out he got cancer because his head was hurting and his nose started bleeding. Mm. One day, my head started hurting, and I was like, "Oh my god! Oh my god! This gosh. is the end of the world for me." And so <laughs> that's why I'm one very empathetic. I absorb other people's pain, and it's yeah. not a good thing. But um. With this, um, very much gonna get off of it. I'm scared, but I'm also very happy because this shit made me blow up like a balloon. <laughs> like, g- we've been at home, stuck in the house. I work nine to five, working from home, so mm-hmm. I don't really get out on top of taking these hormones and I have an appetite. <laughs> so, I'm a foodie. Girl, so, it's just eat. like, Where I'm. That? Where are you about to eat at? Actually, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good I get paid tomorrow so tonight I don't know what I'm going to eat but um, it's like that. yeah so I'm going to officially get I've been contemplating Girl. this so I'm excited I'm scared just because but you're doing good Thank and you. in honor of self care like just reflect on that and the fact that you're able to even admit girl you're doing the damn thing thank you so, you rock that self care segment was yours baby oh okay <laughs> <laughs> okay y'all now we finna get into Maya Fitting into the neighborhood drip dealer okay. segment of the show. And this is like the fashion segment, you know, like, okay. and this is the time where I just like to like talk about different things. Like sometimes I want to talk about red carpet looks. Sometimes I want to talk about a brand. And today I want to talk about like shopping experiences, but like we are both thrifting girls. Yeah. Like I know this to be true. So you already know, I told you to bring a few items okay and we're going to talk to the people just about thrifting and just like the concept of like finding goods because there's shit out there like you know like i feel like thrifting is one of those things that's had its phases of like it's cool and it's not cool but all in all like it's always been like a part of my like identity like just being a thrifter um but there's shit out there and it's also good for like the earth like the ecosystem of clothing is like sustainability and we need that more than ever so we're gonna get into our thrifted pieces. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. So I'm gonna go first. Basically, we're gonna talk about some thrifted pieces that we found, um, and just kind of give like a backstory up to them. Because one thing I enjoy about thrifting is that every piece has a story. Because right. like you really had to like search for them. Right. So these shades that I have on, they're vintage oh, Chanel. Wow. And they're thrifted. I got them at a flea, flea market. Okay. Uh, black market flea. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's local. Yeah, it How was much? cute. 
Now this was a little penny. A well, little you know penny. How we like to a little penny in the sand. Resell. Upsell. <laughs> So, mm. but I mean, they're Chanel and they're vintage. They look like they're in yeah. good quality. And you know, it came so. with a whole like case. The case on the floor, I dropped it, y'all. I'm not getting back oh, up. Oh, wow. And they look good. Yeah. So, okay. They, but these retail for 190 Oh, okay. Yeah. So, probably like. I definitely was like, hmm. Because, like, as a thrifter, it's like. Yeah. Wait a second. I, I yeah. would research if I knew the name. I'd be looking up. No, they were like, authentic. Like, oh, he, okay. like he had like paperwork of saying like oh, okay. authentic, you know, yeah. reseller. Hmm. And he yeah. has like a whole storefront. And they look like were they the only pair? Too? No, he. But they weren't like this. They were like other kind. Yeah, yeah. So these are thrifted. This is thrifted. This bag. Wow. This Louis. It's called a pochette. That's cute. That's a fun. I got for real. this at Goodwill. In Hermosa Beach. Okay. And like the stitching and just like the the zipper, because you know you have to like research the back. Yeah. It's definitely authentic. I could tell because the um, what am I call it is continuing. Yeah. The, the pattern. But this is something that I thrifted around the time, where it was like it was like some life shit going on, like definitely with my uncle, my uncle Jimmy, rest in peace. Uh, I was shopping around the time for his funeral, just looking for a statement belt, really. Right. But I like found this bag, and like the colors of his um service were blue, gold, and white. So I'm like, I'm getting wow. this. Wow. And it's like it's it's everything. What a find! It's everything. So it's- I love this bag. I don't wear it often because I feel like it's a special kind of blue for a yeah. special day. So like I don't wear his it out. Ellie and superstar, and a good. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I love this bag, and then this blazer is y'all. It's such a fine. That is a fine. I found this at Salvation Army just on like a regular day. It looks quality. Like it looks like. It's so like yeah. the everything. It's really a, a coat. It's now, a how pleasure. would you style it? Different ways. I wore this to a party before. I've worn this to like a, a media event, a BET event. Oh. Yeah. That's I've fun. worn this like, you know, just on a casual school day. Like, yeah. Because who wants to wear a plain black Yeah, like I would wear this to work if I didn't have a remote too. all the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's my thrift to find, girl. Okay. A mine iron upscale like that. <laughs> Mine's very much look like hand-me-down. No. <laughs> Worn. But, I but that's, that's the, the duality point. of yeah, thrifting. I exactly. love it. Because I definitely have my pieces where it's like, you got that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let me show y'all. My, so, I mean, all the thrift girlies, like, they get graphic tees all the time because that's where the best graphic tees are. Um, but this one, Ooh. I ran it into the ground. I wore it yesterday. I watched it. But that's I just, a good one. I, I Jimmy knew Hendrix. I had to wear it. So, it's a Jimi Hendrix tee. I thrifted it in San Jose at a Goodwill. I probably got it for about, like, a dollar ninety nine in the men's section, and um, this is what ignited my biker t- biker shorts oversized t era mm-hmm. because that's literally all I wear because all I can fit. But yeah. I love this one just because I am like contrary to popular belief from people who see me in person. I don't dress how my apartment looks mainly yeah. just because. A, I can't fit anything, and B, I haven't really honed in or accepted like my current like bot state of my body and stuff like that. So I'm 25. I'm very much like leaning into myself and just trying to like dress how I feel and stuff yeah. like that. So I'm working on that. But this, this is That's my go to. This is my favorite T-shirt. Now something very interesting and not weird, but I also ran this. My mom hates this little bag. Um, so it's a crochet like. Um, Tote or crossbody tote, um, and I also got it probably in San Francisco, and um, I'm my style all over the place. But I very like I very much like like bohemian type of stuff. I I call myself like a boho hobo because I be looking. That's how I be looking. Um, for this, this is special because it also plays into sustainability, not just thrifting it. But I was a vegan at the time and. To save the earth, me personally, when I buy produce and stuff like that, mm-hmm. I don't put my produce in like a bunch of little plastic bags. Yeah. So the way I just like kind of just throw them in the car because I'm going to wash them anyway. Yeah. But I just put all my fruit That's in this cute. bag. And bitch, they selling these things at Urban Outfitters for like $30. That's cute. So I kind of hopped on a trend. And then my last thing... um, well, this, I thrifted this in Sacramento, mm-hmm. and it's kind of like a... Is it a tube top? 
Yeah, it's like a halter top with the back out. Um, Ooh, I'm a okay. big, yeah, I'm a big chest. Girls are girl, outside. So, mm-hmm. and I don't. I mean, I know my designers and my fashion houses and stuff. Want, but this screams like resort wear, very yeah. vacation. I was kind of saying like Bottega, but I don't know. It just looks very like something. Yeah, like resort wear, like very much vacation on a beach and stuff like For that. Sure. So I thrifted this, you know, put some boot tape and all that stuff. Yeah. Super and, cute. Yeah. I love that. So now we got to get into the Who's on Ox segment. Okay. And this is the part in the show where if we in the car and we blast the music, who are you playing right now? I mean, it's obvious, but I literally have not turned off Renaissance since it came out. I feel like it's illegal to listen to anything else. Yeah. Tonight, I'm going to definitely tune into... Um, Super Freaky Girl by Nicki Minaj. Mm-hmm. Hoodie oh, I by forgot Art. about that. Yeah, I feel like it's been, a, we've heard it already. We thought it was already out, but I'm going to definitely tune into that. I think Megan is listen, uh, dropping another album tonight. Yeah, so. it, the night that we're recording yeah, right now, at least for me, it's a lot of people dropping that I want to hear. Yeah. Like probably by the time this episode drops up, I'll have a new list for y'all, but right now I'm with you. Like Renaissance is all I'm blasting right now. Yeah. I think my top three change all the time, but I'm definitely bumping Heat It. Okay, me too. Cuff It. And plastic off the sofa. Okay. Those are all in but my top. My top three changes every day. Same. Because that album is such an experience. It is. I, when I, I, like you said, it's all experience. But when I first started listening, I gravitated towards Cuff It. Virgo's Groove made me stand up. Girl, Church Girl? Um, church I'm surprised girl. I didn't say Church Girl. Yeah. Because like, that's usually my, like, go to. That was my original faith. Oh, wow. My first faith. straight off the. Psh- you can yeah. be my daddy no. if you want to play. <laughs> girl my original that would maybe act up yeah it was cuff it but then when pure honey came on I was like check my technique <laughs> bad bitches to the left Yo. that beat just gets you moving be in the middle, middle. It's dance all night. night it's funny because yeah. when I left the studio for the uh, shop talk episode um, that was the song that me and Shania definitely was like okay Oh, she wow. cost a billion to, to look, look this good, good, good and then it transitions yeah, into something I, I love that song but so that's good. all i've been listening to um yeah same so we're going to be in the car but for the same shit yeah right now for sure pretty much but girl now we got to get into the tea okay tea time segment I'm and this scared. is when it gets the juiciest in the show it's just like when you're talking to your homegirl on the phone and it's like right before you finna get off the phone you like put all the tea out there before it go okay this is the time of the show okay So the entry is I'm a recent graduate and I've been at my first job for six months now. I'm working an entry level position making $18 an hour. So less than 35K a year before taxes. I know this is my first job. And when I accepted and when I accepted the position, I didn't know much about salary negotiation at that time. My six month review is coming up. What should I do? Okay, well, <laughs> job questions. I'm the, I don't want to say I'm like the last person to ask because I'm very much pro quitting, pro walking out the door when things aren't serving you. But as I get older, understand like bills, there are bills to be paid and whatnot. Uh, in terms of negotiation, I could say I kind of um, was in the same boat. Yeah. Probably recently. Um, and I think for me personally, the two things that make me uncomfortable is asking for some more money or asking for time off. But those yeah. are both things that we deserve. Yeah. Um, as far as six months review, I think I used to have like a rehearsed um, response for that if somebody were to ask me. But I would just kind of be like, uh, like based off of the performance, I'm sure like they're doing well. Um, I would be like, uh, I enjoyed my s- six months here. I learned a lot. Um, I look forward to learning more since I contributed this to the company or not since I contributed this to the company. Are there any rooms for, um, a promotion or things like just yeah. kind of like keep it casual within the conversation? Just be like, I would love to be promoted or I love to explore other, um, titles or roles within this, um, job and possibly if that comes with the raise and stuff like yeah. that this probably wasn't the most cohesive but you, you kind of get the gist yeah. yeah um i don't really know what to say like not in a way that i don't know what to say but like i feel like i experienced this sometimes just in like being in my first like real job i mm-hmm. guess you would say and even like that whole concept of like talking about pay yeah it's uncomfortable yeah when it shouldn't have to be because it's like why do i even have to advocate for this why isn't just automatically like you people see how expensive life is right now 
Like even just in LA, like yeah. you fucking see it. Yeah, every day. We As walk my employer, the- you see that. Yeah. So I don't know. For me, I struggle with this. So if you guys have any tips on how to help this listener, leave them down below. Share your tips. If you're going through this, know that you're not alone. Obviously, like we both share that experience. Yeah. The entry shares that experience. So we gonna figure it out. Realistically, none of us should be working, anyways. Yeah, working is ghetto. We supposed we all supposed to be at the beach somewhere, Harvesting living our best fruits, lives, fishing, just rich. All the fish fucking just dead. Lavish. Oh, you over here positive? I'm like the fish fucking dead. <laughs> There's oil in the water. We supposed to be living good. good. Yeah, <laughs> no food, no resources. <laughs> Everything is about to blow like, up. Poverty. Yeah, <laughs> but you no, know, it's crazy. But keep your head up, and it'll get better some way somehow. Revolution. <laughs> yeah, this was so fun, Maya. Thank you. Thank you for getting me out of my comfort zone. I was I was gonna say yes, obviously, because I'm happy to support and it's always a good time hanging side. out. Yes, we did. Um because normally after work I'm like laying down, um, on TikTok. Yeah. So this is very productive for me. Um I was going through the time as I was mentioning earlier, the birth patrol. I was just like <laughs> I was on TikTok like, what should I do? Girl. So this got me out the house. Um I'm happy you're here. Yeah, Tell I'm the so, people where they can find you. Yeah, you can find me. I was like, <laughs> and see. Yeah. Um, you can find me Maya X Simone on both TikTok and Instagram. Um, I am based. I said earlier I'm a vibe creator, which I am, but um, I post like lifestyle content, but specifically like DIY. I'm um, getting creative, like with projects like that around the house. If you love color and vibrancy and like out of the box authenticity, I'm your girl. Um, I'm also yep. into like health and wellness holistic stuff i do like hair stuff as well i'm just trying to exper- experiment all because this is my daily life this is what i do every day so yeah, yeah. i love that this is so fun you guys know where you can find me at muka chanel on all platforms and at shine season on all platforms this episode is going to be everywhere and we did it period i'm so proud of you i love you, I love you too <laughs>